All right, welcome. Today is Friday, August 30th, 2024, and we are about to head up into the Inyo Mountains for a couple of nights of camping on this Labor Day weekend. But first, we're gonna air down because the road's about to get a little rough. So it is about 80 degrees and we are headed up to about 9,000 feet into a juniper pinion pine forest. This area is traditionally a pinion pine nut collecting area by the Great Basin tribes. This is going to be an awesome trip. So this is a gorgeous trail here that offers up some pretty decent challenges for our Jeep Wrangler. You definitely want to take it real slow and just enjoy the gorgeous scenery. Check this out. Over there we have the Sierra Crest with all the big 14ers. What an absolutely gorgeous view from up here in the Inyo Mountains. Woo! This area of the Inyo Mountains is a geologic anomaly called a pluton which forms when cooling magma is thrust upward above the Earth's surface. Here in this otherwise flat region, the igneous rock has solidified into strange pyramid-like formations that make the landscape seem otherworldly. Beautiful! I think we have made it to our camp spot for the night. This place is looking absolutely awesome. We're gonna set up camp and chill out till the sunset. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick tour of our camp spot here. First of all, over in that direction, above my banana is the Eastern Sierra. And then here we have the uh, igneous granite the Pluton. And then we have our Jeep tucked in very nicely here. Here's our kitchen setup. Not completely done yet, but pretty good. Got the stove. Check out this dinner with a view situation we have here. And then we have our bedroom. Look at that sweet, loving, comfy, deep sleep, inflatable mattress, custom made for the Jeep. If you're a rooftop tent kind of person, I get it. I get needing the space inside your Jeep for the fridge and all your drawers and compartments and all your, you know, whatever, this and that. But I'm gonna say true luxury when you're Jeeping is the deep sleep. And then over here, we have our wash station. You gotta have a wash station so you can keep everything clean and feel like, you know, you're in the coziness of home. But speaking of cozy, check out this cool little kick it spot here. Whew. Really special place. It's been a while since I've shot my rifle, maybe about six months and uh, anything worth keeping needs a little action once in a while. So we're gonna take a few shots. I'm gonna tell you the story of this rifle. Let's go get it. I have this awesome spot where I keep it in the Jeep. Oh my gosh! Someone's already taking it down. All right, so we got the target set up. 
maybe about 20 yards away. I want to tell you a little bit about this rifle. This is not just any old 22. In fact, this is a very special family heirloom. This 22 is a hand-me-down from my dad who was gifted this by his dad when he was about 13 years old. And they would take this rifle out to the desert, much like we do. You could see it's a family tradition and do some target practice. This is a rifle that knows the desert well, belongs in the desert, loves the desert, and is in the desert once again. So this Winchester 22 from the uh, 1950s takes 14 rounds. Put them into place. Let's give it a shot. Here we go. So let's take a look at the damage. Woo, yeah! Look at that. I'd say that ripped a hole right through red. So I'm finally getting my wife to take a shot with the rifle. Let's see how she does. Pretty good. can see this on camera but I just wanted to point out how insanely pretty this place is. As the temperature is dropping a little bit and it's time to make some food so let's find out what we're having on this fine evening. Hello. Hello. What do we got there? We're having pulled pork sandwiches with grilled onions, umbria buns, barbecue sauce, mm. pickle chips. Sounds really delicious. And don't forget, the million dollar view. All right, the onions are looking crispy. So I think it's time to throw in the pooled pork. Look at that hunk of meat. <laughs> Pile some of this pooled pork right on top. And then we're gonna take some pickles. Bon appetit. Mmm, really good. And still warm. All right, good morning. Uh, before we went to sleep, we discovered that our campsite was completely infested by the local population of mice. And they came out with of vengeance seeking all of the scraps and then around midnight we woke up and looked at the sky and there was a pink glow floating over the horizon and even though it wasn't very strong we saw the northern lights once again it was actually one of the darkest night skies we have ever seen this spot that we're at here is an ancestral pinion pine nut picking ground for the people of the Great Basin tribes. And we can even kind of see over here the route that they would have taken from the Owens Valley below. Hey, 
we're gonna go do some exploring, but first I want to show you this sign here from the Forest Service. Mena'a no kagena, don't steal. Native Americans have traveled to Tovo Waha, the Inyo White Mountains, for thousands of years to gather tuva, pinion nuts, and hunt game. Evidence of this occupation remains today. You can imagine people coming up here, spending weeks or months, and then traveling back down in the valley, across the Sierras, where there's a never-ending supply of water. So over here, you have a never-ending supply of pinion pine nuts and game. And over there is the land of flowing water, Payahunatu. There's a really well-defined game trail that leads this direction. So we'll follow that and see what we find. Whoa! What could that be right there? Check out that shining piece of metal. Is that a relic from the old ranching days? Maybe a crashed UFO? Let's check it out. Very weird. What the heck are these things? They're definitely saucers, but are they flying saucers? So unfortunately, this is not a UFO crash site. In fact, these dishes here are all meant to gather rainwater, and that channels the rainwater into this holding tank, which then channels the water into this little feed here. And if you look over here, there is a trail camera wildlife camera. So obviously uh, this is set up by the Forest Service to see who is living out here. Wow, how cool that would be to know the animals that are coming by here uh, in the nighttime and the daytime, of course. <laughs> I'm just hiking around and I came across this really old looking rock circle or fire ring. Not sure what it is, but clearly unlike anything else in the area. Maybe it's from the days of the ranchers back in the 30s or 50s, but it's interesting to see these kind of things. Let's look around some more. So there's another pretty old looking rock ring here. I'm gonna guess that this was a fireplace. So you have this really big juniper and so it's natural to want to sit under the biggest tree uh, to stay out of the sun while you're maybe grazing your cattle. And then at night, the cowboys would sleep here, build themselves a fire and hang out. Oh, check this out. An old 7-Up bottle. Definitely unlike anything you see these days. No refill, I don't, I don't think that's something that you see. It does say recyclable. I'm gonna have to look up to see how old this 7-Up bottle is, but clearly someone was hanging out up here and enjoyed themselves a nice 7-Up on a hot day and left their bottle here for us to find many, many years later. All right, well, we're all done venturing for the day. So now it's time to chill in the shade, enjoy the wind, and do a little drawing. And this is a papoose. This is tuva, or the pinion pine. So you can see actually on this tree right here, there's so many different phases. You have some pine cones that are still pretty green, some that have opened up like this one. We're gonna go ahead and try to open up some of these and see if we can find the tuva nut or the pinion pine seed and maybe give it a taste. We're gonna take one of these green ones and see if we can smash it open. The coyotes at the school where we teach, yeah, I know you're asking, why are there coyotes at your school? 
um, have been eating the green pine cones and you can see what they're getting at. It's a tiny little pine nut, pine seed inside. So we're gonna try the same technique as the coyotes and eat the green ones. Let's try it out. I see him. So here's our pine cone opening up. But check out those beauties. What you could do is collect a bag of these, stick them in a sack, bring them home, let them dry out, and then do the same kind of technique where you open it up. And by that point, the pine nuts inside should be pretty ready to go. Really cool. Look at all those. So if you're ever stuck out here in the wilderness, this would be a life-saving resource. Give it a try. Just crack it open. Open it up. Really delicious. Mm. Wow. Sitting up here and eating these pine nuts really makes me feel more connected to the land. That's a special thing. Oh, check it out. Piece of obsidian. We're on their trail now. The best way to wash the sap off your hands is take a little dirt and just rub. Your hands will be dirty, but they won't be sticky. And if that doesn't work, you can drizzle a little olive oil on your fingers and rub that and then wash it off and no more stick. Alrighty, it's dinner time. So let's see what's in the pot here. Having a breakfast scramble with onions, bell peppers, roasted potatoes, and leftover pulled pork. Very <laughs> yummy. All right, the food is coming along quite nicely. As we like to say, eat out the pot, food stays hot. Mm. After a good day, that right there make you sleep real well. Good morning. We have departed our camp spot for the past two nights and we're headed the southern route over the Inyos here. Earlier that morning when deciding our route, we noticed that the map indicated this technical spot on the road. Not thinking much of it, we decided to tackle it. Contrary to what I'd imagined, we came upon a two-foot step that crossed the entire trail. Loose scree at the entry point, a pinion branch jutting into the road, and a long, steep climb with sharp rocks and uneven terrain. It was a nice challenge to get our adrenaline pumping at 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm gonna be completely 100% honest here. That part back there was completely nuts. And it was made way worse by not being able to throw my Jeep into four low. I've used four low before, but I'm not sure if I wasn't going fast enough or what the situation was. 
but that was really frustrating. So compounded with the difficulty of that tight turn, compounded with the pine tree that was sticking right out uh, on the edge of that turn, combined with that fairly large step that I had to get up, combined with the steep hill, combined with all those rocks, um, combined with almost going back uh, as we were backing up um, and like having a tire off the road and then maybe getting stuck there. <sighs> that was a lot of factors that uh, raised the anxiety level. I wanted to show you guys the view from the saddle crossing from that side. We were just down there where I was filming over, there's a ridge there, over to uh, the Mazorca Peak area, which is right over straight ahead. You have these incredible limber pines, no longer alive, but still very much with us. These guys right here are some of the oldest living trees on earth next to the ancient bristle cones, which are popular in the White Mountains area. So I haven't been recording, but even after that last shot, uh, we had to do a pretty rough road coming back down these very windy switchbacks to where we're at now. So the road still posed some challenges for us, but I think we're more or less in the clear. I keep telling myself that at the very least. And uh, I think we're gonna go celebrate up at Mazorca Peak and have some food and take a deep breath and then head all the way back down the canyon. Here at Mazorca Peak, you have to check out this incredible view from up here at the top. So you can see where we camped last night straight ahead where there's that clearing. We camped right on the edge of that clearing there. And then we drove through these mountains all around and all the way up this peak here. So it has been a very adventurous morning. How are you feeling? Very good. Both feeling very good, very excited to be here. The top of the world. And this is going to be a very well-earned early morning or early lunch sandwich. Well, we're finally back on pavement and it's time to air up. So thank you guys for watching this episode. It's been really an adventure and we hope to see you on the next one.